Hello, this is Roger Bisbee from the Skill Builder channel and I'd like to rant on a little bit about heat pumps again. I'm sorry to keep returning to this subject, but it does seem that it's controversial. It does seem that I sat the cat among the pigeons when I did my initial heat pump rants. And we had a channel called Heat Freaks who did a little video criticizing my heat pump. You might want to look at that. Some of the things they said were quite fair, quite honestly, and I think they agreed with me largely about heat pumps. You would expect the people who sell heat pumps to come out in favor of heat pumps, wouldn't you? What you have to do is put the correct size heat pump into the property for the size construction and insulation of that property. Generally speaking, it doesn't matter what the house is made of, it's just a different form of heating. A heat pump exhausts clean air. A gas boiler exhausts nitrogen oxide, poisonous to human beings, causes lung tissue, respiratory and cardiovascular disease and heart disease. When you mix nitrogen oxide with oxygen, it becomes smog. It is causing a Premature, 40,000 premature deaths a day. Just put it on record as saying that I'm not being paid by any boiler manufacturers or anybody else to make these videos. I haven't really got any beef whatsoever. I don't need their money. I don't need the heat pump manufacturer's money. I'm free to say whatever I want. When you get to my age and your mortgage is paid, you can free yourself up a bit. Anyway, we also released a video a few weeks ago where we showed the installation of a ground source heat pump. And I was waxing lyrical about the ground source heat pump and seemed to be very enthusiastic. And people said, what's going on here? One minute you're slagging them off, the next minute you're praising them. Well, there is a big difference between ground source and air source. And I did readily admit that air source heat pumps can work in the right situation with the right size radiators, underfloor heating, good insulation and draft proofing in the building. And I maintain that to be true. We've had comments from people who are saying, I've got a heat pump, it's working fine, thanks, because I've done all those things, it's in a new build. We've also had people who said, oh, we were talked into having a heat pump. We had a heat pump put in and it's been a disaster from day one. One of the problems that people are facing is maintenance because a lot of these heat pumps are being slung in by people they're not particularly skilled at doing it and they take your money and they run away and when the heat pump breaks down we had an email from somebody the other day who said it took four months to get their heat pump repaired and back up and running and in the end the guy that ended up doing it came along and put a bypass on the heat pump basically to increase the flow rate through the heat pump so that it could get the thing moving and then it could go out and heat the radiators and the underfloor heat and whatever else. It's one of the problems of heat pumps is that you do need to maintain that high flow rate. The other thing I said is that you need to keep heat pumps on 24 seven if you wanna get the best use out of them. And a lot of people said, no, that's not true. You don't need to do that. Well, in fact, I've been checking out the manufacturer's installation instructions and they all seem to say that you need to switch that heat pump on and leave it on and leave it it to run itself which means in the middle of the night the heat pump will be running now I also said that heat pumps are noisy and can be noisy and people disputed that. I had an argument with a guy on the Jeremy Vines show. He sells heat pumps and he came on very, very cross with me for saying these things about heat pumps. He said, they're not noisy. All the instruction manuals that I looked at for heat pumps said, do not put this heat pump in a place where it can cause a nuisance. The heat pump can produce noise and it also blows out a lot of cold air. Sight it in a place where it won't upset your neighbors. And that seems to be fairly consistent advice. So you can't have it both ways. Either they're noisy and you've got to cite them accordingly, or they're not noisy and you can cite them where you like. So I've already said that I much prefer ground source heat pumps and they are not as noisy because obviously you don't have that fan blowing, but of course you do need a fair amount of space to put a ground source heat pump. Even if you have a borehole, a borehole is not an easy thing to put in in most properties, but if you have enough ground and you put a ground source heat pump in, they do work a lot better. They are quieter, but you do need space for all that kit. So I also had people who said, look, I've got a mini split in my house and it's fantastic. And a mini split is an air to air system, basically light air conditioning systems. You can use them either way. You cool the building in the summer or you can use them to warm the building up in the winter. So we had this guy on the Jeremy Vine show who was saying to me, we've got to do something to clean the air up. And I believe in that. I believe in clean air. But is this the way to achieve it? If you're producing a lot of electricity, 
electricity and there is a big question over how much electricity we can produce to supply all these heat pumps will we need more power stations will we need nuclear power stations obviously we will need more power stations but at the moment we're relying heavily on gas fired power stations when the demand kicks in the gas fired power stations fire up you're back to square one because I can't see the difference between producing electricity from a gas fired power station transmitting it all the way down the lines with the incumbent losses that you get from electricity as you transmit it down cables into your house so that you can heat your house with a heat pump so what I am saying is that heat pumps in the right place the right kind of heat pump the right sized heat pump can do a job so let's just have a look at a few things that the installation instructions say because this is not me making this up this comes straight out of the installation instructions and if you don't believe me have a look they're all online and you can just read through and see exactly what they say about heat pumps one of the surprising things I found is that they said do not put your heat pump in a salt environment and by that they mean anywhere around the seaside heat pumps are not that corrosion proof and one of the manufacturers is even saying well you can get this special spray we'll sell you a spray that you can spray all over your heat pump to stop it corroding and it makes you wonder why they don't put that on in the first place so the next thing is that these lovely efficient heat pumps these air source heat pumps you think okay they don't cost much to run look at the size cable that they want they want a cable at least six kilowatt capacity going to that heat pump because they've got backup heaters and they have backup heaters because in the cold weather to get that heat pump up to heat it needs a bit of backup it needs some direct input from electricity so you're using a heat pump to heat air up which is not warm enough you've got to back it up with a bit of electricity it's not me making this up if they didn't need those backup units they certainly wouldn't be putting them in here's another great thing i read do not put the heat pump in a situation where rain can be a problem try to protect your heat pump from rain they don't want driving rain coming into your heat pump making those coils wet and freezing the thing up and while i'm on the subject of freezing up you do have to have the heat pump going through a defrost cycle which is another reason you need that backup heater and every so often on the winter's night and i say every so often because people tell us sometimes it happens two or three times in the evening during which time your heating goes off then the heat pump will go into its defrost cycle and it will melt all that lovely ice around the coil what they're saying is there's a drain and these heat pumps produce something like six liters of water an hour which is coming out of the air when it's frozen basically that's condensation so that condensation is going away to a drain and there's a nice little pipe that they provide and on some of the instructions they even say do not fit this pipe unless absolutely necessary because you know what happens to the pipe it's got condensation running down it it freezes that blocks up there's another problem do you know how to get around that they say put an electric tape around the pipe to keep it warm and while i'm on the subject of freezing don't forget you've got to put in 25 percent glycol antifreeze that's not just the antifreeze you get from halfords got to be special stuff for heat pumps that's not going to be cheap and another thing that they say is if your heat pump is exposed to the wind strong winds as a lot of us do there is a possibility that the wind will blow through the heat pump the wrong way it will stop the fan working properly in fact it can spin the fan backwards and that means that it can damage the fan it actually says that if it spins too fast it will break the fan and again you wonder why they can't make a fan that is capable of running at high speeds what they're suggesting is you put some kind of windbreak in front of your heat pump to stop that air blowing in and even suggesting sometimes that you turn the heat pump so that it's not facing the prevailing wind again in the installation instructions it says beware of snow if there is a possibility of snow blowing in of you know snow blowing sideways have built up of drifts as we often get you've got to protect the heat pump from snow and you do that by building a little hutch and by raising the heat pump off the ground so we've built a nice little hutch we've raised it off the ground the next thing we need to worry about is rodents in the instructions and one particular heat pump is saying that if rodents get in and we're talking about mice here chewing through cables i've had a bit of that going on in my shed and if the mice chew through the cables it can blow the thing up or it can cause a fire it says in one set of instructions so there you are your little mice you've got to keep them out and how do you keep mice out of a heat pump because a mouse can get through a hole the size of a ballpoint pen and if it's warm in there 
that's where it wants to be. So while you're doing all this on your two day install, you mustn't forget that by the time you built your little stand for the heat pump, you must also bolt the heat pump down because they don't want them moving around. Once you've got your heat pump up and running, you can't wait to use it, but steady on. You can't just introduce the whole of the heating circuit to the heat pump. What it recommends in some instructions here is that you should introduce the heating circuit by circuit to give the poor little thing a chance to warm up. You don't want to shock it by giving it too much work to do in one go. I know that feeling. Introduce circuit by circuit and make sure you leave all those circuits on because one thing you don't want is thermostatic radiator valves turning your circuits off so that the flow rate through the heat pump is reduced. It needs a good flow rate, it needs all those circuits open and it's even saying in some instructions disable some of the controls on the underfloor heating to leave them permanently open. So where you've got that lovely manifold and you're controlling all your circuits with room stats, forget all that. You've got to undo the little solenoid valves from the tops of those and just leave those circuits running fully open. So there you are, I'm not making any of this up. These are from the instruction manuals themselves. You can look them all up online. We'll give some links below and see for yourself just what is involved in fitting a heat pump. Because all I'm saying is that there are places where heat pumps will work well. There are places where they will work less well. There are places where they will save you money and there are places where they won't save you money under any circumstances. And the problem is that the salesman or saleswoman is not necessarily going to tell you the truth. We have had some comments from some people who said, I got the guy around to have a look at having a heat pump fitted and he told me not to bother. And I applaud that kind of thing. And I hope that heat freaks are those kind of installers and that they do that. It would be nice to think that the guy that was on the Jeremy Vine show would also temper his enthusiasm. But he seemed to be saying to me that heat pumps are great in any circumstance. There's the problem. I think that there's all this mis-selling or will be all this mis-selling going on and that a lot of people will regret the decision to junk out their gas boiler and put in a heat pump. That's all I'm saying. I hope that's uh, clear to you. It's very difficult to get a nuanced message across on YouTube. I've discovered that over the years. People only hear what they want to hear. They either think you're some kind of shill or they think you should be prime minister. Neither of those are true of me.